So if you've been with us, I'm just going to recap from the top that you are in the Skyscape's free webinar series. And today's topic is the best kept secret in nursing, become a case manager. I'm Kristen Snowden-Smith from Skyscape, and I'll be your moderator today. We'll have a brief Q&A at the end of this presentation, so please drop your questions into the chat. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on demand with a copy of the presentation. Um, and we'll notify you via email. Our speaker today is Deanne Cooper Gillingham, and she's a registered nurse and a certified case manager with extensive clinical case management experience, including med, um, med surge, oncology, hospice, SICU, LDRP, complex case management, transplant case management, just to name a few. Deanna is also the author of CCM Certification Made Easy, your guide to passing the certified case manager exam, which is now in its third edition. She's also the author of Foundations of Case Management, a practical guide for RNs transitioning from nurse to case manager. She's also the co-founder and CEO of Case Management Institute, where she's dedicated to decreasing the barriers to entry into the profession of case management and developing case managers into leaders. I'll now hand the floor over to Deanna. Thank you, Kristen, for that great welcome. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Today, we are going to talk about case management. First, we're going to do a little case management 101. Then we're going to talk about becoming a case manager, how do you get into the field, and then some helpful tools for case managers. So we'll start off with case management 101. So first of all, case management is a growing field. Um, it is one of the fastest growing fields in healthcare. The need for case managers because of the insurance, the way insurance is right now and things are getting paid more for, um, instead of just because it was a procedure was done, but people are looking more for on, on the reimbursement end and case managers are really having a big impact on that. They're needed just about anywhere healthcare takes place. The most obvious places we think of are in hospitals, workers' compensation, and for insurance companies, but they also work in physicians' offices, PPOs, um, home health aides. They can work for automobile insurance companies, and even high-tech companies will hire case managers. So why become a case manager? Um, this picture may describe how you looked. I think it describes how I looked when I first started. Very happy and um, with my career choice, loved being a nurse, loved nursing school. But then after a while um, of working night shift and on call and you, you just get burned out. But yet you still love the idea of nursing. You still love having an impact on your patients. You still love every the reason you became a nurse. You still have that reason behind you. So a lot of nurses move into case management and they do that because they're tired of missing all the holidays, all the family time, everything being worked around them. I'm sure you, I'm sure everybody here has had to rearrange Easter or Christmas or Mother's Day or something because of your work schedule. Also, many bedside nurses are getting very burned out, but they don't want to leave nursing and they still want to make a difference in their patients. Now, every two years, we do a salary and trend survey, a case management salary and trend survey. And our last one was completed in February of 2022, and case managers reported a 90% job satisfaction rate. And I think we can all admit that if we, um, nurses would not report the same job satisfaction rate. In fact, we compared our results with a nursing salary and trend survey, and there was a substantial number of nurses that were not happy compared to the case managers that were happy with their job. So what do case managers do? Um, this graph over here is from our salary and trend survey. So you can see where different um, case managers have reported where they spend a lot of their time on educating patients, families, and caregivers, just like as nurses, we educate our patients, families, and caregivers. Case managers do a an initial assessment on their clients to see if they need case management, and then an assessment to find out what their actual needs are. These needs are not just the physical needs, so it's a little bit different than a nursing assessment where you're going in there and doing like a head to toe. This is more looking at everything about the patient. Will they be able to go home? Will they, will they be able to go 
back to whatever living situation they came from. What resources are they going to need to make sure that that happens? Do they have a, an, a, the ability to procure those resources? Do they have the financial ability? And do they have, is, is there a network or providers in the area that can help with that? So they're looking at a lot more. Um, they're also coordinating care between multiple providers, DME companies, and so, and so on. Um, so, is the grass greener on the other side? Again, these are results of our salary and trend survey, our 2022 salary and trend survey. And the majority of case managers, 62%, earn a salary of 80,000 or more. And that's compared to only 39% of nurses who earn between 80 and 139,000. Now, I know depending on where you live in the country, 80,000 might seem high or low, but the important thing to remember is when you compare, when you're comparing the number, the percentage of nurses who earn that versus the percentage of case managers who earn that, you can see that the majority of case managers do earn a higher salary. Um, also, 65% of case managers reported that they had received a salary increase the year prior, where only, I, um, I don't have the numbers here, but I think it was closer to 49% of the nurses reported getting an increase in their pay. And this is, the, this is my favorite one, the one at the bottom, case managers are happier. So 85% of case managers said that they were satisfied with their current employer and with their salary and compensation. And that's compared to only 58% of nurses. Now, the way that we got this, this percentage was they were asked to rate on a scale of one to five, with three being satisfied, um, one being totally dissatisfied, two being somewhat dissatisfied, four being, three being satisfied, four being very satisfied, and five being extremely satisfied. So you can see that um, these numbers are quite impressive for, for any um, career, honestly, but for case managers and in the medical field, these are quite impressive that 85% of them are happy. Um, benefits. So another thing we looked at in our salary and trend survey was the, um, the benefit packages and also the ability to work from home. So most nurses do not have the ability to work from home. It is becoming increasingly popular. And of course, as a bedside nurse, you cannot work from home, but there are many opportunities that are opening up for nurses to work from home. About, um, about half of the case managers that um, took our survey reported that they are currently working from home. And we also found that nearly half, or I'm sorry, that 92% of case managers earn PTO compared to 82% of nurses who earn PTO. Um, that could be because nearly all case managers work full-time. There are very few part-time positions for case managers and nurses can work um, per diem or other, other types of positions that may not entitle them to PTO time. Okay, job satisfaction. This is another one of my favorites. So overall, case managers are more satisfied than nurses with their current job. So as you can see here, 77% of nurses rated their satisfaction at a three or greater using that same scale. And that's based on um, a nursing salary um, and trend survey that was done versus 92.5, that's over nine out of 10 case managers that rated their, um, that were satisfied with their job as a case manager. So again, I think that speaks volumes and I can tell you how great a career as a case manager is, but I think having people that are actually working that every day, having thousands of them to rate this, nine out of 10 of them to say that this is a great career move is quite impressive. Okay, overtime. Overtime is one of those things that, you know, we. As nurses, I think we kind of get used to working overtime, and it's something that's usually always available to us. The thing about nurse uh, overtime for me was always I want to be able to work it when I want to work it, and not be able to want to work, not have to work it if I don't want to. 
So as far as case managers, only about 10% of case managers reported that they are required to work overtime. This doesn't say that they do work overtime or they don't. They just say the question was asked, are you required to work overtime? Again, only 10% said they were. And as you can see, the, those that were required to work overtime, the vast majority of them only worked a couple hours of overtime. Demographics, so who are today's case managers? The average case manager, again, according to our 2022 Salary and Trend Survey, is age 50 or greater and female. The um, case management seems to be a career that nurses go do their bedside career and then move into. And there's reasons for that, and we're gonna look at those a little bit later. So what does it take to be a case manager? Um, as we just talked about, the nurses are um, the greatest number of case managers are age 50 and over. And that is because most employers want you to have some acute care nursing experience prior to going into case management. So for many case managers, this, they didn't just graduate from nursing school and go straight into case management. They spent some time at the bedside, working at a physician's office or somewhere else, getting some um, other training. And the other thing that I think you'll find is interesting is, although case management is considered an advanced practice of nursing, it does not require a additional degree. So as you can see here, 15% of case managers that responded to the survey have an associate's degree. And you do not need a bachelor's, although some um, employers will prefer a bachelor's, it's not necessary, nor is a master's or a doctorate. So you do not have to go back to school to enter the field of case management. You don't have to take on any student loans. You don't have to wait a couple years to go through and um, get trained to work in case management. So how do you become a case manager? <laughs> well, first you get some experience as a in healthcare. So 86% of, of case managers have at least 10 years of experience in the healthcare, healthcare field. And 50% of case managers have three to 10 years of experience, of case management experience. So what this is telling us is that the majority of case managers have worked in healthcare for a while, but not necessarily in case management. They might be newer to case management, which again goes back to, this is something that um, nurses will work other places for a while, get a lot of experience on how the healthcare system works and on how to care for patients so that they can educate those patients and then they move into case management. So how do you learn case management? Over 90% of the case managers um, that were surveyed learned on the job, and that is a plus and a minus. Um, case management is very different than bedside nursing or other areas of nursing, such as home health, working in a skilled nursing facility or a rehab. With case management, we're looking at, at things a little bit differently, and we're gonna go over that in another slide. But the important thing to remember is there's no significant educational barrier to entry into case management. You do not need to go back to get another degree. Okay, so this is what I was talking about, why it's not necessarily a smooth transition. When we go from med surge to labor and delivery or ICU, we can put in an IV or a Foley in any of those places the same. When we, go, when we go into case management, we have to learn a lot of things that we never learned in nursing school and we never practiced in our nursing career. A lot of those are insurance related. When a doctor writes an order that says to start an IV, we don't ask if they have insurance, who's paying for it, is it Medicare, Medicaid, do we need a prior auth? We don't care about that. When they say prep them for the OR, we prep them for the OR. Um, so learning the insurance side is probably the biggest barrier that most nurses face when they're moving into case management and just learning how to navigate that whole um, realm. We've never had to think about any of that. Um, 
case managers also do a lot of quality insur assurance. They're usually the ones that have to prove that um, things that are supposed to be done are getting done, like with Medicare, again, going back to insurance. They are required, um, hospitals are required to provide certain forms in a certain time period. So a lot of times it's the case manager or the utilization manager's job to make sure that those are done. Also, we have a lot of um, regular regulations and regulatory bodies, and it's also, also a case manager's job to make sure that those are kept up with. Um, understanding levels of care and what qualifies a patient to go to a different level of care. As a nurse, when the doctor says discharge the patient to the SNF, um, skilled nursing facility, or discharge the patient with home health, or discharge the patient home, we just do that. But as a case manager, you need to make sure that they meet the requirements to have those other services, whether it's home health, whether it's going to a, a skilled nursing facility, whatever that is. Um, they are in charge of coordinating and transitioning care, making sure that they have the DME that they need. Again, making sure that it's covered by the insurance. So you can see where some of these things can be um, very new for the nurse that's moving into case management. Also, another area that's very new is the social aspect. Um, learning to find uh, alternative funding if a patient doesn't have, you know, the doctor wrote the order to send them home with a medication, but it's not formulary and they can't get this medication. Is there another way that they can get it? They can't afford the co-pays or the deductibles. The social determinants of health has been a really big buzzword in um, case management recently. So just because two patients with the same diagnosis and the same treatment plan do not necessarily have the same outcome, especially when they go home. If a patient cannot doesn't have a car and cannot make it to the drugstore to pick up their prescription or can't make it to the next doctor's appointment. Those are barriers that the case manager has to try to overcome to make sure that the treatment plan that the doctor sets forth when the patient leaves the hospital can be carried out. They also need to know about community resources that may be available to the patient. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about some tools. So how do you learn all of this stuff, all of these things that we did not learn in nursing school? And how do we take what we did learn through our, ex our experience as nurses and transition that into case management? Because we just talked about, a, we just spoke about a lot of things that do not, we, are, we do not learn as nurses, but there is a lot that we can transition over. And so, um, things like patient education, we've all educated our patients. That's a, a very big thing. We've all advocated for our patients. That's a very big part of case management. So we have a course, Foundations of Case Management, and this course introduces nurses to case management in a very logical way. They start by building, we start by building on what they know and what they do well. And then we add things like the case management process. We compare it to the nursing process and show how it's similar and how it needs to, um, how case managers do it a little bit differently. We talk about the ethical, legal, and practice standards for case management, the principles of case management, utilization management, which is different than case management, but can be a part of case management. And we explain all of that. <laughs> Care delivery, rehabilitation concepts. Um, rehabilitation is not all created equally, and there's different um, things that you need to consider as a case manager when sending a patient into rehab or getting a patient rehab even at home or outpatient. Then there's the psychosocial concepts and support systems. This is imperative to a patient successfully um, meeting their goals and uh, being able to successfully transition back to a healthy person. Um, communication, communication can be very different, um, especially if you're working telephonically, you don't have your eyes to see what's in front of you. So we go over some communication techniques, especially for um, kind of being at a distance. And then there's the quality and outcome measures and reimbursement. That's probably the biggest thing is the reimbursement methods and managed care principles. Um, managed care is huge right now and understanding how that works is really important for the case manager. Okay, so how do you become a case manager? I like, this is, to me, this is like the backdoor secret of getting into case management. So home health and hospice nurses are actually, depending on their job title, most of the time they are working as a case manager because they are coordinating care. 
they are going into the home and observing, doing an assessment. They're looking at more than just the patient. They're looking at the home that the patient's living in. Do they have a place to store their food and their medications? Um, is it a safe place? Do they have rugs on the floor that maybe they're tripping over or another hazard? Um, they are also reporting these things back to the physician. They are the ones who can see if they have their medications and if they're taking them properly. And hospice nursing is even more of case management, more so case management because they truly are coordinating everything, the DME and everything. So these two areas, home health and hospice nurses are a great way for a nurse who wants to get her feet wet into case management and maybe move into something even um, like with an insurance company or in a hospital of case management to kind of transition into, especially depending on the area where the nurse lives. Some areas, it's very easy to get a position as a case manager. You can just go to your hospital and say, I want a shadow and they have openings and you can get right in. Other places, it's very hard and competitive to get into case management um, because so many nurses want to leave the bedside right now, it can be a little more difficult. So most companies that hire case managers, especially away from the hospital setting, would like them to have their CCM certification. CCM certification is considered the gold standard, but it's one of those catch-22s where you can't get certified unless you have one to two years of experience as a case manager. But you can't get that experience until you get a job. So um, that's where the kind of hospice and home health care comes in. Hospice and home health nurses usually meet the criteria to sit for the CCM exam and become CCM certified, which once put on their resume looks, um, looks really good. So that's where we come in. We have a book called CCM Certification Made Easy. It was written by a case manager, me, it was based on the CCM's, um, CCMC's exam blueprint. So every five years they do a role and function study and they update the exam blueprint and then we go and we update the book. It's very easy to read. My goal in creating this was to make it something that after a long day of work, the case manager could come home, open up the book and it was written at a very easy to read level. Even the um, font is bigger so you don't have to go find your glasses. It's comprehensive meaning it covers every one of those topics on the exam blueprint, but it's concise, it doesn't overwhelm. And it was written specifically for this CCM exam that so many employers want their, um, their hires to have, either before being hired or a lot of them require it within two years of hire. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Kristen now. Thanks, Deanna. So in addition to the book, um, Skyscape has taken this content and put it into an app that is available on um, both the um, Google Play and Apple um, app stores. And it has a 150 question practice test and it allows you to practice on the go no matter where you are. Next slide. So right now we can open the floor up to Q&A. So if you have any questions for Deanna, you can post them in the question window and we will take your questions. So there's a question uh, from the floor, Deanna. Should case managers get certified through CCM or the ANA? That's a very good question. Um, I actually love this question. So um, ANCC, the American Nurse Credentialing Center, has a certification as well as CCMC, which is the Commission for Case Management Certification. Um, I actually wrote a blog article on this because it really, um, it's a very popular question and it really depends on what your goals are. So if you wanna work in a hospital setting, the ANCC, um, the American Nurse Credentialing Center, which is offered through ANA, may or may not be a better option for you, especially if you want to stay there. But anywhere outside of the hospital setting, or for, um, I didn't mention this in the presentation, but 
um, case management is a multidisciplinary field. And so anybody who's a social worker or has um, a physical therapist, physicians, they can get CCM certified where ANCC certification is only for um, nurses. So it really depends on where, where you look like you want to go. If you know that eventually you want to work for an insurance company, you want to work from home um, in some type of role outside of the hospital setting, then I would recommend getting your CCM. It's considered the gold standard. If you think that you're going to stay in the hospital setting, then you have a choice with either one and it would just depend on what the employer in some geographical areas and some employers prefer one over the other. Thank you. We have another question. Uh, this question is uh, asking if you know it's possible to work remotely outside of the U.S. as a case manager, saying they spend ex extensive time in other countries like Mexico and would like to work remotely. That is another good question. It's a really good question because that's actually why I started my business because I wanted to live abroad and <laughs> most places will not, most places will not hire outside of the country, but that doesn't mean that not, no companies will. The reason, there's a couple reasons for that. Um, one is just hiring people in another state for a company, just hiring somebody outside of their state means that they have to learn and comply with labor laws in that state. And when you hire somebody from a different country that's residing in that country, now you're opening up a whole nother can of worms where they have to comply with the labor laws of that country. So the best way to do that is to find a company that already has a presence in that country and understands the labor laws in that country and is willing to hire somebody there. Thank you. Oh, let me see this. There's another question. Um, is, there, is there any, do you have any um, insight on CMs who work with a military or veteran population and how you can be successful there? Yes, actually, um, I did a little bit of case management in, um, in the Veterans Administration. I will tell you, I did it as an quote unquote acting case manager because I did not have my bachelor's. I have an associate degree and um, in the VA you have to have your bachelor's degree for the case management position. And so, um, but I do know a lot of people that work in the Veterans Administration as case managers, they do have a lot of positions both in the, in the VA healthcare systems, in the hospital settings, as well as um, remote case management positions. They have a site, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. It's like usajobs.gov, I think. And that's where you can find all open positions at the VA medical centers, including their case management positions. A second part to that, is there, you know, additional case management training or something to learn the um, differences between the military insurance, the culture, the hospital structure, um, the factors that may be different than civilian life? Yeah, that's a great question. So that's basically on the job training. When you get hired with the VA, they usually, the structure and um, is very different. Working, you know, in the civilian sector, private sector, and then working in the VA sector, it's very different. The hierarchy is different. Um, the way that you, you know, have a problem and escalate it is different. The patients are different because it, um, most of them are not getting a bill, but they can. It, it depends um, on their, they have a, a percentage of, oh gosh, it's been a while since I worked there. I'm trying to remember, but like they, they're vest, vested, I think it is. Like they can be 50% vested, 80% vested, depending on how, and it can only be for certain conditions. So this is something that when you get hired there, they do teach you and it's very unique to the VA system because as you mentioned, it is they are their own um, payer. If, I guess that's the right word. And not everything though is covered 100% for all veterans. So if a veteran you know, had Agent Orange exposure and one of the risks is cancer, they might be able to 
be 100% compensated for anything related to a di diagnosis related to that. But if they come in and have to have their gallbladder removed, they may not be compensated for that or have to have, be able to have that. So that is all training that happens at the VA. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned a lot about there's no required uh, advanced degrees for case management, but are there master's-like programs for case managers if they if you wanted to? Yes, great question. Absolutely. So there are there not there aren't a lot of them, but they are increasing. So that's a good sign because people are, we call case management the best kept secret in healthcare because honestly, patients don't know about it. Sometimes physicians don't know about it. Other nurses don't know about it. Um, and now and educators don't know about it. So we are working really hard um, to make sure that everybody knows about case managers, especially our, our clients, our patients who need case managers. And yes, there are some master's programs out there for case managers. Some people prefer to get something maybe along the healthcare administration side versus the case management um, at the master's level. It's And that's only because they feel if they want to do something different in the future, it'll be more transferable. Um, I will kind of caution this though. So somebody with absolutely no case management experience who wants to be a new hire for um, a company normally is not going to be paid at the master's level. So I, I've spoke to many nurses who went back to get their master's in case management, but never had any, have, have never worked in case management, so they don't have any actual experience. And they can't get their resumes looked at because as soon as they see master's, the employer is thinking a certain pay scale, but when they don't see the experience that corresponds to that pay scale, they're very hesitant to give them an interview. The master's in case management is more for people who would like to work in a maybe director role or a manager role in case management. So those with those levels don't, unless they have experience, don't you, or maybe teach, you know, teach other case managers in the, um, in the, in, Organize, for the organization that they work for. So usually it's not an entry level, go get a case management degree or master's degree in case management unless you have a little bit, at least a year's worth of experience first. Okay. Um, another question we have is, it seems to be difficult to find jobs. Um, if you don't have the CCM certification, but you're going for it, is there some way to get the job and then, like you kind of get caught in between? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's what I talked to er about earlier as far as the catch-22. Like, it truly can be a catch-22. Um, I can give you my my words of advice and it's, it's just, you know, kind of like worth what you paid for it, I guess. But I feel like some of the, there's different ways to get into case management and it really depends on your individual situation. The very best way to get into it is know somebody who is working there and can recommend you. Um, most nurses get really good jobs because they are working for, um, a friend recommends them. And you know that's kind of what we do. If we get a, if we have a terrible job, we're telling our friends, "You don't want to work here." But if we have a great job, we're like, "Oh, you need to come work with me." Uh, I know that's how I've gotten all my best jobs. If you, so I always recommend to people, let everybody you know know that this is something that you want to do. Everybody that you went to, that you've ever worked with. If you're somebody like me who's worked in a lot of different places, I have a lot of, I've grown a lot of um, coworkers and friends and colleagues in the nursing space. So just letting everybody know, hey, I'm think I'm really interested in case management. Do you work there? Do you know anybody who works for these company, a company X Y Z, um, and try to kind of get in that way. The other thing I would say is there is a Case Management Society of America, which is a professional organization. If you if you have one of those chapters in your local area and you go to the meetings and start networking and meeting people there, 
that's another good way because they see you, they know you, they know you're interested. You can let them know I'm not a case manager, but I really am interested in learning more about this and asking their opinions. They may know of job openings and that's and that's another way to kind of get yourself backdoored in. Um, as, as I mentioned previously, the home health or hospice, if that's something that you're interested in doing or ever thought about doing, getting a year's worth of experience in that. Um, to get your CCM, you need to have a year's experience under a CCM or two years experience if it's not under a CCM. So depending on whether your employer, um, your manager or director is a CCM, you would need one to two years of experience and then you can get that and then you can move into another role. The other thing is, honestly, the best paying CCM jobs, or I'm sorry, the best paying case management jobs do require usually the certification and that's because they are being accredited by either URAC or um, NCQA. And to be accredited, accredited by either of those organizations, a certain percentage of their case managers need to be certified. So sometimes you may have to work for a company that maybe doesn't pay as well, maybe doesn't have as good of a reputation to get enough time in to get your CCM certification. And then at that point, you can get another job because you now have experience and your certification. So um, that I, that's one of the things I did. The first job I took, I took a pay cut to get in, but it was like, I just need to get the experience. And it was a pay cut that I could afford to take. Not that it was fun or anybody ever wants to, but I did it for a couple of years. I got my CCM and then I moved into a um, much more flexible and better paying job. So are you saying like, if you either you know, networking is king so basically you you go you get to know someone who's in the case management job get the case management job while you're there getting your experience you then go and get your certification is that how you typically would do it right you have to have been working for two years when you apply for certification so just to apply to sit for the exam you have to be working for again one or two years depending on if you're working for somebody working under a certified case manager. So yes, sometimes you have to get a job doing something that will qualify you for that. And if you go to CCMC's website, they have like the um, criteria that you need to meet and it explains everything there. You have to have like either an, an RN degree, which I'm assuming most people here have. Um, LPNs are not eligible for the CCM exam unless they have another bachelor's degree. So it's kind of a little bit of a um, of a unique area there that you do have to be an RN, even though some employers will hire LPNs, others will not. So that's, and that goes back to that assessment. Um, to be able to do an independent assessment, you need to have your RN and case managers do an independent assessment on each patient. So did I answer your question? <laughs> Um, yeah, I think you did. I think that's the, the key is you, it, it, you not only do you have to have nursing experience or some similar experience, you then have to have some case management experience, which I believe you said was two years. Would the hospice experience count towards that two years? Yes, yes, it does, which um, is great. I didn't know when I worked, I worked hospice and I worked home health, and I did not know that either of those were case management positions in that I was, a, they would have made me eligible to sit for the exam. I wish I would have known that way back then, um, but I did not. So now that's one of the reasons why I like to tell people that's a great way to kind of get you yourself that experience and be able to put on your resume. You know, the other thing is really on your resume, showcasing all the things that you did as a nurse to transfer over into case management, even if it wasn't a case management position. So, you know, if you worked, like I worked in in LDRP, we would get phone calls all the time from patients and we would triage those phone calls, telling them whether to come in, call their doctor, whatever. So that's something that you could put on your resume that shows that you've um, done, worked telephonically. Even though you might've been sitting behind the desk at the, at the hospital, you were still telephonically triaging patients. So that, you know, we, we don't always think of all the experience we have, that's another really good reason why when we when we um, teach people in our course, we are also preparing them 
for an interview and a resume by pointing out the different things that they've done during their career that they want to make sure they showcase and highlight on that resume to get it looked at. Now, um, employers are now using resume um, software, which is called, it's an automated tracking system, and it just pulls words out. So if you've never, if you've never spoken the case management lingo, even though you may have done some of the work, either working in a physician's office or you know, in various places that you work, you don't know what to pull out and put on there. So that's one of our goals. Along with teaching case management, we also let you know what you've done previously that maybe will help you to get your resume looked at, to be able to speak the lingo when you're in an interview, to actually be able to talk about and use certain words that we use, like transitions of care versus discharging the patient home. No, that was a transition of care to home health. So different things like that, just to be able to speak the lingo, lingo makes you appear like you know and understand the profession. Thank you. For case managers, I guess, you know, in nursing, like you said, you have med surge, you have ICU. For case managers, are there specialty specific things like that or it could be the oh. gamut? Yeah, great question, great question. So yes, you'd be surprised at places case managers work. The most often we think about are workers' compensation case managers, um, insurance company case managers, and hospital case managers. But So those are different specialty areas. And what we teach is the foundations. So we kind of teach you, the, just like when you went to nursing school and you had to learn like basic foundations, and then you would learn, you know, um, labor and delivery, or you would learn, you have an oncology rotation or a pediatrics rotation. We kind of do that first level of just the basics, but there are other things to learn, like workers' compensation has its own set. We give you a very brief um, kind of overview of the of different areas, like insurance companies, like um, like working for a hospital as a case manager. But all of these could could go even deeper into those specialty areas. There are oncology case managers that only work in on, with oncology patients. There are pediatric case managers that only work with pediatrics. So um, catastrophic case managers that maybe only have patients that maybe had a significant trauma or life event. So there's so many different areas for case managers to specialize in. Thank you. One final question, uh, or maybe let me look here. Um, If you already have a certified managed care nurse, do you need the certification for CCM? So if you're working under a certified case manager, you need to work for one year before you're eligible for this to sit for the CCM exam. Okay, so even other certified managed care nurse, CCM is an additional certification, correct? Correct. Um, the certified managed care nurse, I'm pretty sure, is an ANCC or um, no. There's another organization, A, um, oh gosh. The ACN? ACN, that's it. Yes. <laughs> it's the ACN. So that is their designation. And you have to have, I, I, I understand what the question is because you have to have another certification or work in a certain area to be able to sit for that exam. For CCM, no. You only have to have worked in case management in any area. And what they are looking at is certain things that you do in your job description. So when they say working as a case manager, they're looking at, have you done transitions of care? Have you um, done, you, do you do an assessment on each patient? Do you come up with a plan of care for the patient? They're looking at those types of things when they are saying, are you working as a case manager? Excellent, thank you. Um, do you know of any um, services that are hiring without any experience or not? So right now we're in a really unique time and it's, to me, it's kind of, um, I don't know, it, it's mind boggling because there is such a need for case managers, there's such a need for nurses, but then when you go to apply for these positions, it seems like it's hard to get them. So part of it is just the geographical area that you live in, honestly. Um, that is one of the major 
things that will determine how easy or hard it is. I know nurses that have been basically been told, hey, we think you'd make a great case manager, and they were told to start the entire department <laughs> So at a small rural hospital where there was not a case management department. So it's really one of those things that it, um, it can be very easy to get into and it can be very hard to get into. I will say that most of the most of the work from home case manager jobs, um, they prefer experience, but they don't require it. And there's a couple of different reasons for that. You know, I do talk to some hiring managers. One of their biggest problems for work from home is they hire somebody that they the person thinks they want to work from home. And once they work from home, they're isolated. They, um, they're learning case management. They have no one around to ask. So like, if, you know, when you go from med surge to ICU, you can ask another nurse a question. When you're working from home, it's a little more difficult. So that's one of the reasons why they really prefer to have somebody with experience. But there are, you know, if they don't have somebody with experience, then they're gonna take the next best thing. So right now, you know, talking to those hiring managers, the first person they want to hire is somebody who has previous case management experience. The next person that they'll hire is somebody who's gone through one of our courses, and that's because they know that they at least understand what case management is. So along with not, you know, never working from home and the isolation, a lot of people that think they want to be a case manager don't know what a case manager really does. They think it's, oh, I'm just going to work behind a desk and I'm not, you know, it's an easy job. It's really not an easy job. You're kind, you have to love solving problems and you have to love going the extra mile because you have a patient that needs something and, you know, they were discharged from the hospital two days ago. They were supposed to take a PO antibiotic. You call them two days later to check on them and you find out, oh, my daughter's going to go on Friday after work and pick that up. And you're like, no, it's Tuesday. You were supposed to be taking that for two days and they don't have transportation or a way to get it, and then you have to figure out. I mean, I've actually called pharmacies, just Googled all the pharmacies in the area and said, hey, would you please deliver this drug to this patient? She needs it. And um, so you have to be able to, and willing to do this. And so that is why there's kind of like a tiered system. Yes, they want people with experience first who knows who knows what case management is and how to do it. Then they want somebody who at least knows what it is and believes that this is a career that they want to move into. And then lastly, they're going to take a chance on somebody who has no experience and no education in it and may not even really know what it is that they're getting into. Final question. So you go, you have the two years experience as a case manager. When you take the case management certification, is there typically a bump in salary? Oh, that's a great question too. You can, these are really good questions. Um, so it de the, the answer is it depends. <laughs> Some employers will automatically give you a bump in salary for getting your certification. Um, others will not. I'm going to tell you a, really quickly my story. So I worked as again again. I started off because a friend got me in the door with a company, but I had to take a pay cut. I got my certification and I figured, okay, I'm going to go to them and say, hey, you know, like I'm one of the, you know, I'm one of the top case managers on the unit. I'm helping other people. I'm training other people. I got my CCM certification. I want a raise. And they were like, we can't give you a raise. And so I started looking around at other positions and started using my network again, reaching out to other people that I knew that were working um, as case managers at different organizations and I was able one of my friends said hey yeah we're actually hiring um, my boss just asked me if I knew anybody that was interested so that place did require that you already have your CCM so luckily about six months before I had gotten it and I was able to interview and get that position I had two things in my favor one was I had a recommendation from somebody who was already working there and two I had my CCM which they really wanted somebody with their CCM already so that was and it was a significant pay increase that um, that organization recognized the experience and the CCM certification at a different level that the employer that I was currently with did so I hope that kind of sheds a little bit of light on it it's really one of those it depends yeah Definitely, I think if you if you can't get what you, you want where you're at, you have to find it somewhere else. 
Um, so that, I think, concludes our Q&A. Um, as we wrap up, finally, let's we'll tell you a little bit about what's available to those people who made it this far. Keep going. So you can get the, the CCM certification made easy in print or app. Um, continue. You can go to CCM Certification Made Easy to get the book, and you can go to the App Store or Google Play Store. You can download the app, this, uh, try it out, there's some free content, and if you choose to purchase it, you can go to skyscape.com slash skyscape apps and search CCM and choose the case management um, CCM certification made easy. And at checkout, if you put in CCM save 25, you'll save 25%. Next slide. Thank you everyone for attending our presentation today. As I said before, you can get the app on the Apple and Play Store for more tips for becoming a case manager or taking the foundations uh, course, go to casemanagementinstitute.com. To learn more about Skyscape, your partner in nursing, you can go to education.skyscape.com. To view this webinar on demand, go to education.skyscape.com slash webinars. It will be available by the end of the week. Contact us more for information on Skyscape solutions or group savings at sales at skyscape.com. And if you have any further questions regarding this webinar or content, you can email webinar at skyscape.com. Thank you. This concludes our presentation. <laughs>